This video tutorial is part of the Mastering QPCR course found at courses.toptipbio.com. Follow the link in the description for more information about the course. In this video, we're going to go over a nifty little piece of equipment, which is the Nanodrop, and specifically how to use the Nanodrop to assess RNA quantity and purity. So this is one of the first things you should do when you've extracted your RNA, because obviously you want to see if you've got RNA in there and how pure it is. So what is a Nanodrop? This right here is a picture of the Nanodrop in my lab, and it is one of the latest models called the Nanodrop 1. And the Nanodrop essentially is a UV spectrophotometer. So a spectrophotometer is a device which can measure the absorbance of UV light. Now the fantastic thing about a nanodrop is that it can do this by using very, very small amounts of volume. So what I mean is around 1 to 2 microliters of sample, it can actually measure the concentration and give you a reading of the purity, so how pure the RNA sample is. What's also fantastic to the user is that you don't have to do anything to your sample to prepare it before putting it on the nanodrop. You simply just pipette your sample straight onto the pedestal. So the pedestal is, is around here. And what you would do is lift this arm up, pipette the sample arm, close the arm down, and then it can take a reading in a matter of seconds. And the big attraction for using an anadrop is that it's very quick and easy to use. It's very simple to do. So let's go over what is actually measured by using an anadrop. Well, the two main features of using an anadrop is that it can give you a reading of concentration and purity. Now the first is given in units of nanograms per microliter. Now in terms of purity, it's given into two parts. So it's telling you how pure your sample is from protein as well as salt contaminants. And it does this by what's known as ratios. Now in terms of protein, it's a ratio uh, known as 260 over 280. And for salt, it's 260 over 230. Now these numbers are the wavelengths in nanometers. And I'll go into these in a little bit more detail shortly. But essentially, just by using a few microliters of your sample, you'll get a concentration reading, as well as some analysis on the purity of your sample in terms of how free from protein and salt it is. So what we're going to do now is just pretend that we're on the nanodrop system itself. And we're just going to go and process some theoretical samples. So let's say we've put a sample in and we click measure. Ideally, you want to end up with something that looks like this. So this is a graph of wavelengths on the x-axis, ranging from 220 nanometers to 350 nanometers, and then these are just absorbance values along the y-axis. So straight away what you should look at is the concentration, which is found here on the right-hand side. So in this case, this sample has got a concentration of 258.83 nanograms per microliter and we're presuming that's RNA. You refer back to the graph, you see that there's a peak here. Now ideally what you should see is that your peak is over 260. Now this is indicative of DNA and RNA in the sample because DNA and RNA nucleic acids both absorb at 260 nanometers. So the next thing the nanodrop gives you is readouts of purity and it is these two uh, ratio values here which are the indications of purity of your sample. Now the first is 260 over 280. Now what is 280? So the 280 is again the wavelength, but in this case it is proteins that can absorb at 280 nanometers. So this first ratio is giving you an indication of how pure your sample is from protein. So in this case it's giving you a value of 1.98. Now what is the optimal value? So for RNA, the optimal 260-280 ratio is 2. So and it's slightly higher than a pure DNA sample. Pure DNA samples have a 260-280 ratio of around 1.8. Underneath, the next purity ratio is this 260 over 230. So 230 is the wavelength at which salt absorbs and other contaminants as well. So this is giving you uh, an indication of how pure your RNA sample is from salts and other contaminants. Now the optimal ratio for this is pretty much anything over two is a good indication that you've got a very pure sample. So this is what you should be looking at, but obviously it's not always the case. So let's go over a few bad examples of RNA on the nanodrop. So here we've just repeated the measurement on the nanodrop, and in this case, this is a pretty bad example. So what I've done is overlaid 
the optimal sample in the background in, in dark blue and the new sample is in red here. So straight away you can see that there is two peaks. If we look over to the concentration, we'll see that you're actually still getting a, a concentration, it's albeit a little less than the first sample we did, which means it still would contain some RNA. However, what you should now understand is that this first peak here is over this 230 mark. And obviously remember that 230 is the wavelength at which salt and other contaminants absorbs that. So straight away, this is indicating that this sample is actually contaminated with salt and other impurities. Now, if you look at the 260-230 ratios, you see that this is dropped to 0.21. And this is another indication that it is a bad sample full of contaminants. So if you're faced with this scenario, I would either re-precipitate this sample to try and clean out the salts and other contaminants, or if I have some original sample left, I would just re-extract the RNA if I could. Let's go over to a different sample now that's quite poor. So that's this one. So again, it looks quite strange, it's quite flat, but what you should see is actually the peak here has shifted. So the peak, instead of being over 260, is now over 280. Now remember, 280 nanometers is the wavelength at which protein absorbs that. So this is indicating that there's quite a high amount of protein in this sample. Looking at the concentration, there's still a tiny bit of RNA in this sample, but not much. And then if we look at our ratios, the 260-280 ratio is now 1.32. So this is indicative of a sample which is quite heavily contaminated with protein. Now you don't wanna carry on with this sample especially because proteins can actually interfere with downstream qPCR. So what I would do in this case is ideally re-extract the sample and try and get rid of that protein by maybe adding more proteinase K during the digest steps. So that's just an overview of using the nanodrop itself and the results it gives you. So to summarize the ratios that we've just gone through, um, ideally for RNA, your 260-230 ratio, which is the ratio to signify how pure your sample is from salts, ideally should be two anything over two basically, so this is the range. In terms of 260-280 ratios, ideally again for a very pure RNA sample, you want this to be two. Generally anything over 1.82 I would use. For DNA it's the same, apart from this 260-280 ratio is slightly lower, so it's 1.8 if you're doing DNA extractions. So just to finish off, I thought I'd give you some top tips when you use the nanodrop. So the first is always when you get to the nanodrop before you use it, is to clean the pedestal and you clean it with water. You don't have to use anything else, you just apply water and then leave it for a few minutes and then get a lint-free tissue and wipe this off. Because you really do not know who's been in the lab and reading on the nanodrop before you and if they've cleaned it after their use. So always be very careful about making sure that the machine is actually clean before you use it. This is another tip I picked up which is before you do any readings on the machine, you have to blank the nanodrop with whatever solution you've got your samples in. So if your RNA sample is reconstituted in TE buffer, for example, you need to use TE buffer as your blank. But before you then proceed onto your sample measurements, I would take a measurement of your blank and this will then signify whether it actually is clean. So it will give you a good indication whether your cleaning has actually worked and if it's not, you could then go back and re-clean the machine and then re-blank the system. Check for air bubbles. So when you pipette onto the pedestal with your sample, be very careful not to add any air bubbles. Because if you do, you might get some very crazy graphs. And if you get crazy graphs, it's probably because you've got air bubbles on the pedestal. So just go back, wipe the sample off, and then pipette new sample on. This uh, next one is obviously if you've got your samples and they've just come out the freezer, for example, you want to make sure you mix your samples quite well before you measure them. Otherwise, the concentration readings and purity readings won't actually be accurate. Be very careful of when you do measurements on low concentration samples. So if you've got very tiny amounts of RNA, the nanodrop is not very sensitive to RNA measurements. Anything below 10 nanograms per microliter of RNA it's very hard to get an accurate reading on the nanodrop. So if you've got very low concentrations, you might be better to use an alternative machine, which may be the qubit. So the qubit can actually go down a lot further in terms of sensitivity than the nanodrop can. So just be careful about this point. If you've got a lot of samples and you're processing a lot of these at the same time, I would re-blank the machine ideally every 30 minutes 
when you take the measurements, obviously like anything in, in the lab, usually you do a duplicate reading. So you take one measurement of one sample and then wipe it off and then put the same sample on and take another measurement. And then to get your results, you would average these values. This just makes everything a bit more accurate. Most nanodrop systems now have the ability to export your results on a USB stick. But I would always advise that you write your results down as you go along. And the three things that you want to write down are obviously your concentration, the 260-280 ratio, and the 260-230 ratio. And finally, being the good labs users that you all are, you want to clean the pedestal after use. So after you finish using the nanodrop, wipe your sample off, add some water, leave it for a few minutes, and then wipe this off. So in this video, we've gone over using the nanodrop to assess RNA quantity and purity.